Good morning, everybody. Happy to see you this morning. Everybody smiling? Oh, it's a fake smile. <laughs> Whatever it is, which is okay. Um, so, life itself always giving a lesson for us when we are aware uh, what we are doing in our daily life. All our experience with the human being interaction always, I think, if somebody is smart and mindful, always there is a lesson, always there is something to learn. So, you know, as usual, I'm traveling a lot. When I'm in Illinois, uh, my regular morning, uh, if I don't have anything to leave early morning, I always try to go and do my exercise. And it is very important to me. Yesterday I saw Chinta in the gym, but I didn't talk to you. Uh, <laughs> um, so, it's very interesting, uh, something interesting happened yesterday. Um, I was uh, jogging uh, on the track at the Health Bridge in Crystal Lake. Um, so when I go to gym, I try to hide my face as much as I can because the nature, people know me really well. And so then I don't look around too much. Then I have to say hi to people, <laughs> which is beautiful, but I try to avoid it, you know, so otherwise it's really distracting. So then um, I can see all the people uh, running, jogging, walking on track. And so I saw one man a couple of times just passing me. And maybe the third time when he passing me, he said, I love your t-shirts. So then, you know, I totally forget what I was, I was wearing. I was wearing Choose Loving Kindness t-shirt. So then, um, when I'm wearing that baseball t-shirt, and so the back of my t-shirt I cannot see, but he can. Then um, he's uh, jogging with me, you know, like parallel. He said, I was reading back of your t-shirts, uh, where is this monk? <laughs> Right? You know, my back of the t-shirt is says, Bhante Sujata, loving kindness monk. And so I said, right here. <laughs> so, you know, then we stand like, he was kind of confused. And when I say right here, I said, I am the one people call me, I am the loving kindness monk. Then he started to make the joke, oh, you are self-promoting. <laughs> right? I said, no, I am not promoting self, I am promoting loving kindness. That's what I'm doing. Then right after I answered like that, he was so interested. Then he slowed down and kind of talking to me. And then he asked me the next question, um, where is the temple? I said, right here. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love to give those kind of, I don't know. I love to give th those kind of uh, little confusing but wisdomful uh, answers. I said, right here. Then he asked, right here? I said, right now my temple is this gym. I really, that moment, um, because when I go to gym, I cannot do computer work, which is, I'm so happy. <laughs> uh, I cannot interact with my cell phone and text message into people. I'm extremely happy about it. So when I'm in the gym, I know I'm by myself, I'm focusing whatever I'm doing. And also that time I realized it's, really deeply helped me to understand where I am thinking, my thought process, uh, my emotions, so many things I can understand. When I am kind of running and jogging um, around the track, so I, in that moment I was in a really good mindset. So when he come and talk to me, I was considering a lot and so that's how I answer that. So then after that conversation, he just, you know, left and he said, one day I will stop by at the temple. Then I explain about the temple in Woodstock. So now I'm keep jogging. Then I <clears throat> realized the religions in the world, most of the religion in the world, they are talking about their final salvation after death. Most of the religion, their final salvation after death. You go to uh, unite with the God, or unite with the Allah, or whatever, you know, the religion people are believing. I can see some religion, most of the time they talk about that salvation after they die. 
So then I realize how beautiful Buddha's teaching is. Because Buddha never talked about our salvation after death. He was talking about our salvation, our freedom, right here in this lifetime. If you want to content, if you want to be happy, if you want to be enlightened, not after death. Right here, right now, I think my answer was perfect. Where is the temple? Right here. Why? Everything we experience in this life, life experience. Right now, right here. That's so beautiful, right? That experience. So then no need to worry about the next life. So when I was giving a talk in Penn State um, long years ago, maybe six years ago, somebody asked me, do you believe, you know, a next life? <laughs> My answer was, it's in the audience or the children, the student. I said, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't care about, yeah, I, I, you know, don't misunderstand. When I say I don't care, people misunderstand because it's not really important. Think about my next life right now. Then I said, I don't worry about my previous life too. But I'm concerned right now what I'm doing, which is very important in our life. So I'm asking when you come to the temple, what is your awareness for your next life? I don't think so. What do you want to have? You want to experience that beauty, that enlightenment experience right now in this, this lifetime, which is wonderful. So, then I keep continuing. This is my wisdom. I call the uh, gym meditation, right? And so, keep on walking and, you know, the doing my exercise. I realized everything, we all are in a dream. We all are in a dream. But we are believing this dream is a reality. We all are in a dream. But the problem with us, we are believing this dream is real. Many years we dreamed. Now this dream is so old. We add so many information to this dream. Now we think it is real. According to the Buddhist teaching, sometimes we dream many lifetimes. It is very powerful. So now we are in a dream. I am in a dream. You are in a dream. Whole world is a dream. This whole existence is a dream. Then I realized sometimes we are giving teaching as a Buddhist monk and a Buddhist teachers or other wisdom teachers. Now think about the word greed. The word greed. What are the synonyms for the greed? Any other words for the greed? Okay. Anything? Desire. Okay. Desire. Okay. Very common word we are using. Anything? Selfishness. Okay. Selfishness. I love that. Okay. I, huh? like. Hmm? I like it. I like it. Okay. There's another big word we always are using. Craving. craving. Yes. Craving. Another one? Envy. Envy. Okay. More possessiveness. Huh? Possessiveness. Okay. Anything? Want. Want. Last. How about attachment? Right? Attachment. So all the words are so wonderful when you talk about the greed. In Pali, we call the lobha. So now, when we see people have desire and attachment and greedy, you know, the, you know, mind, those kind of mind state, we are telling people, don't be greedy. Nancy, you know how many times, sometimes when we talk, we are funny all the time. Say, Bhante, don't be greedy. You know, I know, you know, when we have, you know, sometimes we have funny talks and so you say always, don't be greedy, <laughs> right? So, when you say don't be greedy, do you think people understand what it means? I don't think so. Yesterday I realized when I say don't be greedy, don't be selfish. So, people don't take the lesson. We have to explain so, uh, you know, the, where is it? Where is our Todd? Our Todd? Our Todd? Oh, yeah. So, Todd, you know, so we have poisons in our mind, right? We call the three poisons in our mind. Yeah, yeah one poison is greed. One poison is greed. Why greed is a poison? So, poison is wonderful. 
bring you joy having poison sometimes you lose your life hmm bring suffering because of the poison so we call three conditions they are poison in the mind so now what we are doing always we are telling people don't be greedy i think people don't understand that we have to explain to people how we are create in the greedy mind how we are creating attachment we have to explain to people so then yesterday when i keep working and doing my workout i was thinking how i am creating my greed how i am creating my desire how i am creating my attachment without see how i am creating it i cannot address that attachment so then i realize so how i am creating attachment desire because of my interaction with my senses now think about you all have six senses now your six senses are not working what we call dead <laughs> how wonderful right <laughs> you know senses are not working then we go dead now we call we are alive because our senses are working <clears throat> so what put the advice to us we have to tame we have to train we have to protect our senses now i will explain to you how we are creating desire attachment and greed now think about this now let's use the today is a whole thing is about the gym okay now we are at the gym you so you see somebody beautiful you see a beautiful person handsome man beautiful girl then how you see the beautiful how you see beautiful because you see it right after you see you say you think that person is so beautiful what is that your projection of your eye it is your projection so uh, right after you project what do you think it is beautiful when you say beautiful then you internalize how you internalize i love that person so then that's not enough you are making more stories maybe i can get the number <laughs> right maybe first day you are trying doesn't work now you are keep internalize maybe next day i can go to the gym again i will see the same time maybe she will come then i'm keep you know what you are doing keep chasing why that projection you are believing it is real then is become my projection is become i and my what do you think it is real no mind made it is delusional so net delu delusional outcome you know whatever you created you believing it is real now you are keep thinking keep thinking keep thinking keep thinking one week <laughs> two week three week now you get attached to it now you are dreaming about it it is affecting your sleep you dream about that person remember last week i said one girl sent me a message bante there is a beautiful monk i am falling in love with him and i go to see i go to the temple to see him not to listen to the dharma talk could you please help me and now think about how delusional it is but i know it is i am in a dream not this temple okay somewhere in uh, another temple <laughs> now otherwise otherwise you are making a story right listening to that you are making that delusional decision maybe one of our monks now think about how we are making the story right so be careful with that so now listen to me don't make the delusional experiences so now you can see how we are creating suffering in our life so now you can see what buddha said buddha said please guard 
your senses. Please protect your senses. Please tame your senses. Senses are beautiful, bring awareness into your life. And also because of these senses, we can destroy whole our life. Now think about this country, lots of addicts. Because of what? Hmm? Because of our senses. So we go and you know, the project our senses to the outer world, bring information in, we are attached to them, making my experience, my people, my country, my temple, you know, so then we have, now think about right after you internalize it and make it I, my and mine, I call I, my mind syndrome, so then you can kill each other name of that. You can fight for that. So many negative things happening after that. Now I am asking, after you creating that story, that delusional story, then you are believing it is real, then you get scared to it. Then you are so fearful to that, but you don't know, our awareness is less, we created this. Now then I was thinking how I am going to explain to people. This is what I'm, how I am explaining. Now there is a person who is making mask, like a demon kind of mask very scary. So then that mask maker giving that mask to Nancy May. Okay Nancy, you know I'm using you example because you are staring at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> and so giving to Nancy that very scary mask. Then night, you know, you see that mask sometimes looks scary. You know, it's, you know, very fearful. You know, big eyes, you know, very scary mask. Then sometimes children get scared to that mask because of the demon. But now think about the man who made that mask. Do you think he gets scared to that mask? He's the one made that mask. I don't think he gets scared to that mask. Why? He knows he's the one made it. <laughs> he made that eyes, scary eyes, he made it. But person or child who using that mask, they don't know about it. They think it's very fearful. Why we are projecting our using our senses? Now what I am asking you, when you are using your six senses, be aware. That's what we call meditation, mindfulness. Otherwise, every day we are talking about this doesn't make any sense. That's why some people practicing meditation 30 years, still they are same annoying people. <laughs> why? Why? Even 30 years they call we are practicing meditation, they didn't realize we have this delusional mind. So, if you really want to be happy and wonderful and enlightened experience during this meditation process. Please dig into those kind of information. Now, then right after you internalize that experience with your six senses, it's become I and mine. So then you want to control it to where you want. That's true. You know, right after you experience, now that man is belong to me. <laughs> that woman is belong to me now. Then you want to control that person to fulfill your expectation. Do you think you can do that? 100% control that person? Most of our trouble come from that expectation? Then what will happen? You cannot control that person? Now think about, I want to control all the monastic at the temple. Do you think I can do? Good luck. <laughs> right? I cannot. So if I try to control them, what will happen? I get mad. I get mad. Now you can see the second poison will happen in your mind. What? Because of what? Because how you are using your senses. Then I get mad. I get, you know, the hateful, hatred. Now, first poison, greed or attachment. Second poison, hatred or anger come because of what? Expectation. Because we are believing everything is real. That's what we call the delusion. That's the third poison. Because we are believing everything is real, 
all the problem will come after that. Now I am asking you now, don't run away from this world. Don't run away, away from, you know, walk away from the people. Think about every single human being, every single human condition, every experience in this existence is delusional. So if you can understand no attachment, no worries, no sadness, easily you can let go. Life is beautiful. Life is joyful. Why? It is short experience. Then you can die peacefully. And I realize something beautiful after you come to that mind condition. If you can understand that greater level of your mind, then you are not attached to any rituals. You are not attached to any cultures. You are not in a frame of what is called the condition. You are totally free. You don't have boundaries after that. You don't see the colors, black or white. So you don't divide after that. So in the Buddhist teaching, we have a word. The word in Pali we call the prutajjana, uh, you know, putujjana, or in Sanskrit called the prutajjana. Right? So how we translate that word in English? Ordinary mind. Ordinary mind. So ordinary mind, that's how we think. Ordinary, ordinary mind, we all have those problems. Now I am asking you, this is enough. Being ordinary every day. How many years you had this ordinary experience? You want to play this game until you die being ordinary? Which is okay if you want to. <laughs> but I feel right now, in my experience, it is exhausting for me, being ordinary. I, I am always thinking, I want to transfer my heart and mind to the different level of awareness. Because many years, 40 years being a monk, I just play this game, being ordinary. I call the candy dharma. <laughs> you know, it's so sweet. Oh, loving kindness, loving kindness, so good. <laughs> you know, it's a la like a lullaby. You know, when you talk about the loving kindness, it's kind of good. People are falling asleep even. No, when you are, when I'm talking about these things, are you falling asleep? I don't think so. I don't think so. It is kind of awakening experience. What the heck going on? And so you are thinking, what is this? I know maybe you are not understanding this today. I'm totally fine with that. I'm totally fine with that. If you said, you said something crazy, I don't like it. I just smiled. I just smile because why I say that? Because it doesn't hurt to me. Because why I said this today, I understand. So my understanding, way I can explain to you, express my experience to you, maybe even one person, very little seed I am going to plant in your head. Maybe thousand years or millions of years of later, one day you are become a Buddha because of this seed. So that's my expectation if I have. I have millions of years later. <laughs> so I'm really sure you are smart enough to understand this delusional existence we all are in. But, you know, then people are talking about past. Past life. You know, not past life, past experience. When you pass, also delusional. When you think about our past, just memories, some, some kind of memories. That's another delusion. Then to people talking about the future, it is unknown, it's another delusion. Then people talking about the present moment, it also another delusion. Don't misunderstand me. It also another delusion why most of people, present moment for many people, little bit of the past, little bit of the future. If you understand real present moment is not the past, not the future, totally give up those two extremes if you can come to that mindset, that is the present moment. Why? That present moment, no boundaries, no fence, it is totally free. Okay, I am very sorry for the confusion. 
And so I'm asking you, go home with the confusion and keep thinking about it. You will get something beautiful. Okay? Thank you so much.